Hello, this is Stephen Anderson, uh, pastor of Faith Forward Baptist Church. I just wanted to record this video while everything's still fresh in my mind to uh, tell the story about what happened to me last night. I was driving back from uh, San Diego to Phoenix. Um, today is Wednesday the 15th. This was yesterday on the 14th. I'm driving back from San Diego to Phoenix and uh, I go through a uh, Border Patrol suspicionless internal checkpoint. This is about maybe 75 miles east of Yuma on Interstate 8, somewhere around there. And uh, I get stopped at the checkpoint and uh, they start asking me questions. Uh, I refuse to answer the questions. They wanted to search my vehicle. I didn't uh, allow them to search my vehicle because of my Fourth Amendment rights uh, not to be searched without a warrant. And uh, they referred me over to secondary inspection area. I said, no, I'd like to go on my way. I would like to go home. And uh, they, they insist that I went to secondary. Well, then they bring a dog over and they say, well, the dog alerted us that there are drugs or a human being in your trunk. He's trained to do that. And so now we have probable cause to inspect you. Now, the dog didn't bark. The dog didn't make a sound. And I asked them to tell me, well, what did the dog do to tell you that? Because the dog just walked over, sniffed, and pretty much walked away. And uh, I asked them to bring the dog over a second time and show me. They refused to do it. I never saw the dog again. So I sat there for over an hour just waiting for them to let me go. Uh, they just held me there. They, they uh, wouldn't let me go anywhere. Well, after a little over an hour, the DPS showed up. The, uh, the Department of Public Safety, which is basically like the Highway Patrol of Arizona, shows up and says that uh, I'm under arrest because they had probable cause to search my car and I'm refusing to get out of the car and let them search the car. Well, I told the DPS officer, I said, look, you know, the dog didn't do anything. I said, ask them to bring the dog out and show you because I said the dog did not detect anything. I said, there's nothing in the trunk except tools. Well, the DPS officer asked the Border Patrol if they would get the dog out and they told him no. So basically they told me, well, you know, you're coming out of this car one way or the other and we're going to search this car whether you like it or not. And so they, um, a gentleman from the DPS walked over to the passenger side of the vehicle and he got out a hammer and uh, some other device and he was kind of tapping on the window for a couple minutes like as if he were you know getting ready to break the window and he was on the passenger side I'm all the way over on the driver's side well they told me you know cover your eyes because there's going to be glass when we when we break this window in so I put my hands over my face like this and I leaned forward to cover my eyes and at that moment, not only did the officer on the passenger side break the window, but another hammer just came from out of nowhere. I didn't see this coming at all and shattered the window right behind my head. I mean, six inches from my head. So both windows shattered in the same instant. I'm like this with my uh, face in my hands. And at that moment, I'm shot by tasers. So I'm in excruciating pain. I couldn't even control my body anymore because when you're hit with these tasers, you're paralyzed. And so I couldn't even, I, my hand came down from my face. I was trying to put my hand back in front of my face. I couldn't even control my arm. I'm screaming in pain. I'm shot with another taser. One guy from the Border Patrol grabs my head and basically shoves it into the, the uh, driver door where the broken glass was, where they had just busted out the window. And I could just feel the glass shoving into the side of my head here as he just jammed my face into that uh, side of that door and uh, held it there for, for a little while. It's hard for me to measure the time because I was, I was in so much pain it felt like it was taking forever. But it was, I mean, this definitely was taking some time. Then they grabbed me, threw me on the ground. Another officer uh, stepped on my head. I mean, with, it felt like his full body weight and basically was just driving my face down into more broken glass asphalt, which is what all these cuts are from on my head. And uh, he's got his, his foot on my head. I'm shot by more tasers again. Keep in mind, I had my hands like this over my face. I haven't resisted at all. I'm crying out for mercy. And they're just torturing me with these tasers again and again. And they're, they're stepping on my head. They're shoving my face in broken glass for no reason. I wasn't resisting them. I wasn't fighting back. I was just limp, just begging for mercy. So then finally I decided... Maybe I should just be silent. Maybe they don't want me to cry out. So then I was just silent and uh, still just tormenting me. So finally, they stopped tasing me. 
they pick me up onto my feet, they take me into the uh, trailer of the Border Patrol there, and when I walked in, I could see all their uh, tons of screens showing all the different cameras. So, I mean, this is on tape from a whole bunch of different footages by the Border Patrol. They said, you know, they put my hands by my back, they handcuffed me, and uh, blood was on my face. I saw my reflection for a moment, and there was literally not one square centimeter of my face that was not covered in blood. I mean, my face was just solid blood. I looked like a monster. And so I'm sitting there in the chair with my hands handcuffed behind my back. The Border Patrol agents come in. They were laughing at me. Let me give you their names. One of them, his first initial was C, last name Diaz, comes in, mocks me, laughs at me, reviles me. Uh, another one, uh, B. Griffiths was another one. Uh, another uh, agent that was uh, standing in there at this time, uh, Agent E. Gomez. And so these men are, are uh, laughing at me, razzing me, while blood is dripping from my face. I'm, I'm just sitting there, you know, helpless. I've been beaten horribly. And uh, so anyway, the DPS comes in. They read me my rights. Pardon? Did what? they tell you that if you just answered the question? Oh, yeah. And then C. Diaz told me, well, if you would have just answered the question, we would have let you go. And I said, wait a minute. I said, I thought that it was because the dog detected drugs or a human being in my car. I said, I just caught you in a lie. I hope these cameras have sound. And so uh, that was uh, C. Diaz that told me that. So anyway, uh, the DPS agent comes in. He read me my rights. I have the right to remain silent and so forth. They take me. They throw me in the back of the squad car. They drove me about 70 miles away from where I was going home. They drove me all the way back to Yuma. Uh, they took me to an urgent care center. For, uh, for some reason, he didn't want me to go in there and get treated. I begged him to, to let me use the bathroom because I really had to go to the bathroom. I hadn't been in, in hours, and I drank a bunch of water, and I had to go really bad. I told him, I said, you know, I'm, I'm in pain. I have to go so bad. He said, no, no, just wait, just wait. You know, he gets out. He chats with another guy from DPS and kind of tells him the story while I'm waiting. And then uh, finally he tells me, oh, it's just five minutes to the emergency room. You know, I'm holding the bathroom. He takes me over to the emergency room finally. You know, eventually I get in there, I, I use a bathroom, they put 11 stitches in my head, and, um, you know, they, they, they cleaned out the glass, they cleaned me, and it, it took, now, now you're probably thinking right now, why haven't I cleaned off my face? This is after my face has been cleaned. They cleaned my face for about an hour and said, hey, this is the best we can get it, this is the best we can clean it. So I got 11 stitches, you can see the damage, uh, now that it's all cleaned up, before I just had a mask of blood on my face. They, uh, they took me from the emergency room to the county jail. They, you know, uh, I was basically, you know, checked into the jail, slept, spent the night in jail. I'm in a, a cell. I don't know what's happening. I don't know when I'm going to see a court. I figured it'd be within 24 hours. So then uh, they basically pulled me out, and uh, court was basically just a lady telling me that I have to show up on Friday at 10 a.m., and uh, on Friday at 10 a.m. is going to be my arraignment where I'm going to plead not guilty because I did not, uh, was not detected by the dog. And guess what they found when they searched my car, by the way? Because, of course, they did after they shattered the windows out of my car and uh, beat me to a bloody pulp. Then they did search my car, and guess what they found? Nothing. Because it, all I had was tools. I didn't have any drugs. I didn't have a human being in my car. And so wake up, America. Why is this happening in the United States of America?